Hi. Right, hey everybody and welcome. We're going to be talking about charcoal for the next few weeks and delving into some topics relating to mark making. So what have I been doing? So for the last month I've been experimenting with charcoal and during this time period I've created about 20 drawings. Uh, I really just wanted to push my own use within charcoal and experiment with the material again. However, this experimentation within mark making led me down a rabbit hole and I revisited a lot of uh, charcoal work that I'd done in the past, different materials and tools, and just really tried to experiment with how you could make marks with charcoal on different surfaces. I really wanted to bring it more in line with the way I approach other materials and make sure this reflected my practice better. And because material experimentation is such a large part of my interest, I thought I would try and document this process and give you an insight to that side of my practice. Right, so here we go. So let's start off by looking at the materials I've used during the last month. This will be a brief overview of everything that I've used, but in the coming videos, they'll go into more details about specific processes and applications. So we've got charcoal powder here, probably the most important form of charcoal that I used. And when used on a surface such as Yupo, there's just so many possibilities with what you can do with it. But there was also a huge learning curve. When working on a surface such as Yupo, the charcoal powder can be unmanageable and fragile throughout the drawing process. So you really have to be careful until you get to the end stages where you fix it. And for those who don't know what Yupo is, it's a synthetic paper that has a super smooth texture, but due to its plastic like surface, it doesn't buckle or warp when wet. Uh, this has been paramount to figuring out these techniques on this paper. Um, but I'll go into the Yupo more when we, when we need to. So to go along with the charcoal powder, we have paper stumps. Now paper stumps are a super simple and cheap tool that's just compressed paper. The functionality of a tool as a paper stump will change depending on the surface. For example on Bristol board I'll dip it into the charcoal powder and drag it across the surface in order to leave marks. Whereas on Yupo paper I will push the charcoal powder that's already on the surface around. You don't want to do is sharpen it with a sharpener or a knife. Uh, you'll ruin the tip, it will start to fall apart and you'll get an uneven uh, conical shape towards the end. Uh, so you just want to wipe it off with a bit of rag um, and that will get most of the charcoal off or you can use a bit of chamois leather. Um, we'll go into what chamois leather is in a bit but you can use it to clean your paper stumps. Uh, another thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to get them wet. Because it's compressed paper, if you get them wet, you start to ruin the integrity of the paper stump and it will start to fall apart. So, And for the third item I use in my charcoal drawings, we've got a putty rubber. Now these three items, the powdered charcoal, the paper stump and the putty rubber are probably the most important tools that I'll use. And you can get some unbelievable marks with just these items. So the first thing you want to do when you get a putty rubber or a kneadable eraser is to knead it. Um, it's the first mistake that I see when people try to use uh, kneadable erasers. They come out of the pack and they're not great, they're sort of sticky. Uh, but if you start working it, start kneading it, they become malleable and they will become one of the most important tools in your toolbox. Also, when you're working it, and making it more malleable. This also gives you the opportunity to start to shape it into points or chisels. So when you're removing charcoal, you can remove it with quite high degree of accuracy. Uh, and it will also keep it clean. When you use a putty rubber such as this, I think this one is about three or four years old. Uh, obviously they will pick up charcoal and pick up graphite and start to get dirty. Uh, but you clean them just by kneading them. You'll start to work the charcoal out. The charcoal will end up on your hands. You'll just end up with a clean surface which you can use and they'll last you a really long time if you take care of them. You want to avoid dropping it in anything like sawdust or pencil shavings, anything that might be uh, detrimental to the rubber if it's kneaded in. But other than that, they should last you a really long time. Here we've got an Edge Pro Gear charcoal bag. Uh, essentially what this is, it's a bit of cotton with charcoal powder inside. Um, you can use this in tandem with the charcoal powder. 
uh, or you can load them up beforehand and then you sort of can beat charcoal out of it. Now this is more of a specialized tool. They can run quite expensive. It's, a, it's certainly a tool that if you are very interested in making a variety of marks within charcoal, it's something that is very interesting to use. But if you're just starting out in charcoal, it wouldn't be my first tool to go to. You can also use it in tandem with your uh, charcoal stump and you can beat the edge of it and put a little bit of charcoal on your paper stump instead of dipping your entire paper stump into the charcoal. This is one of the ways in which we can control our gradation within charcoal is by limiting the amount of charcoal that we're putting on our tools. And you can also use the tail end to sort of brush the charcoal around. It has a frayed edge and you'll get some very nice chaotic marks from that. Uh, so here we've got some General's charcoal pencils, both extra soft, both 6B. From my understanding, this is the softest that they go. Uh, I don't use anything harder than this because you end up denting the paper too much. Whereas a soft charcoal pencil like this, you can be very light, but still create marks that you can work with. You can take them away, you can add more to them, and they're very uh, malleable at the time. Uh, both are sharpened, as you can see. I recommend sharpening two or three pencils beforehand, before you start your drawing, so you don't have to stop your flow of drawing to sharpen a pencil. I'm gonna, so we have an unsharpened pencil here. I'm gonna show you how to sharpen it because ultimately I think that you should avoid sharpeners. Now, when you're sharpening with a pencil sharpener or a charcoal pencil sharpener, you are twisting and this twisting is creating a lot of torsion on the end of the charcoal pencil which ultimately when you've got something so brittle like exposed charcoal here that twisting action can very easily snap, snap off the end so instead of that what we want to do is use a Stanley blade now if you're using a Stanley blade you've got to be careful obviously um, general rules are to like sharpen away from yourself um, and on a secure surface. So let's go. Now you can either use a Stanley blade holder or a Stanley blade uh, bear. The Stanley blade holder uh, obviously gives you a bit more grip and a bit more protection from it, but it can also force you to be too hard and too heavy handed with it, which can lead to lots of breaking of pencils. My favorite and the safest way I've found to sharpen pencils is to take your Stanley blade and sort of dig it into a surface such as a cutting mat and then use that point as a pivot point. You slowly pivot with the blade, twisting the pencil and you'll start taking away little chunks of wood. Now just take your time with this and sort of find something that's comfortable for you to do but please be careful. Um, now this now this technique works because instead of giving that twisting energy to the tip of the pencil, you're going along the grain of the pencil which it wants to cut along. You're finding the grain and you're cutting with it. And this is just a lot safer for the pencil tip. Um, it is a slower process but also you can have more control over the shape of your pencil. Angle the pencil this way in order to find the angle that you want to sharpen at. And again, you're just twisting, just taking off small amounts, um, working it to a point and just slowly working it. And again, this is sort of why I suggest doing it all beforehand. This can be quite a long process, especially if you're not used to it. Um, and you don't want to have to, if you're really in the flow of the drawing, you don't want to have to stop drawing in order to sharpen your pencil. So and I recommend having two or three pencils sharpened. So another tip for sharpening pencils is that you want to try and keep the point as even as you can. Uh, the more even your point is, the more symmetrical your point is, the more precise your marks will be. So obviously Stanley blades are, as you've just seen, are a tool that you can use to sharpen your pencils. You can also use it to shape charcoal, um, but I'd also use it with powdered charcoal on a drawing in order to scrape charcoal around. Uh, you can really sort of get a grungy looking texture by scraping the charcoal off. Um, but again, it's something that's very sharp. It's something that's very dangerous. It can tear paper easily. So you do have to use with caution. 
and only use it sort of if you feel comfortable using it. As mentioned earlier, this is chamois leather, more typically used for car cleaning, but it's a great tool for drawing. As I showed earlier, you can use it to clean your paper stumps. It's a type of leather typically made from sheepskin, making it the only non-vegan tool on my list. To my understanding, I think everything else is vegan. It's a great tool for drawing because of the texture. I would liken it to crushed velvet, but it isn't that close in describing the texture, but it's probably the closest uh, reference point that I have. Um, it allows really broad, uh, a raising of charcoal because of this texture. It will pick up charcoal really easily. You can use it again and again. Um, this one, as you can see, is quite dirty. I've used this quite a lot. Um, but this square, I've again, I've used this square for like three or four years. And once it gets dirty, I just take it into a sink and wash it with soap. Uh, and just thoroughly wash it, work out all the charcoal and then let it dry, let it dry fully and then you'll have a, a very sustainable tool to use. So that's what chamois leather is. Now we also have tape. Obviously masking tape super helpful for securing drawings but you, I also use it in a variety of other ways. So I will take bits of tape off, um, generally in strips and then lay it down on charcoal and just strip the charcoal off as if you were waxing. Obviously, if you're doing using tape on anything like Bristol board or cartridge paper, you've got to be super careful of not tearing the paper. Yupo, you just won't tear the paper at all. Uh, you can also take the tape and then scrunch it up. And then with that sort of scrunched up look of it, dab it against the drawing and you'll take off the textured bits of charcoal. Super handy for creating texture in your drawings. So another tool that I like using is this Mono Zero Eraser. It works in the same way as a mechanical pencil. So you click the end and the eraser comes out the edge. This is the rectangular one. As you can see, you also can get a circular eraser. You also get replacement erasers. So once you start to run out, you can just take it out and replace it. And then you'll have a new eraser. A uh, super handy tool for fine marks, but also more stubborn marks. Because it's got this ferrule around the edge here, which is supporting the eraser, you can apply quite a lot of pressure and still sort of keep it quite straight and keep erasing. So super handy tool. So stencils have been something that I've been playing around with charcoal this time round. Uh, because I'm using the powdered charcoal, you can obviously almost apply it like a spray paint and powder over the top, keep it very soft and then lift up the stencil and you'll have a mask. So whatever is covered by the stencil won't get covered in charcoal and what is not covered by the stencil, charcoal will go through and the paper will be stained with charcoal. Uh, so you can buy your own stencils. I've got some from Amazon, um, but you can also go and make your own stencils. Now, this might be a bit difficult to see, but this is something that I've made out of mylar. Um, I've also made stencils in the past out of uh, acetate, but again, sort of just thinking about the different ways that you can apply charcoal and the different types of marks that you might be able to make. So definitely experiment with the idea of laying something on top to stop the charcoal from being able to get to the base paper so you're creating work in layers. Now to have a quick look at brushes. These are the four brushes that I've been using mainly for the charcoal drawings. Uh, the first one is a squirrel hair brush from De La Rowney. Uh, these brushes are quite old. I don't really know where I've got them from. I think I've inherited them at some point, but I know that this is a squirrel hair. Um, it's very, very soft, akin to a, a makeup brush. It will pick up the charcoal and allow you to place it. And with a soft enough mark, you won't drag the charcoal away. You'll just place the charcoal on top. So very important for a very soft brush and this will take some getting used to of how to push the charcoal around. But um, again, very important, soft brushes are a must. I also then have another charcoal brush. This is, again, I think this is some sort of squirrel hair. It's very soft, it could be sable, but the important thing is that it's super soft and it 
allows you with a soft enough hand to lightly apply the charcoal without disrupting the charcoal that's beneath it. That's in relation to something like this, which is bristle brush, um, a harder brush, uh, which I will use to put charcoal down, but I'll also use this to take charcoal off. You can get some very nice looking brush marks by working with a brush that's stiff like this into soft charcoal. And again, it's about experimenting. It's about knowing how much pressure to use and when to use that pressure. But I would highly recommend trying a few different brushes just to see what works with you and what different marks you get and what you like. So. Those are the three brushes that I mainly use. When using a liner brush, I will put some charcoal powder into a small container. And depending on the surface that I'm using, I will use either water, which I have a little spray bottle of here, or acetone. Now, obviously with acetone, it's nail polish remover, it's harmful vapors. So you want to use it in a well ventilated area. I only use acetone um, in very select areas and I only use very small amounts because of the danger um, and even when even though I'm only using small amounts I am using it in a well ventilated area so you have to use acetone if you're drawing on something like Bristol board acetone has a very very high alcoholic content in it which means that it will evaporate very quickly so it doesn't really have time to sink into the paper and warp your paper before it's evaporated so now what you can do is you can spray some water into the charcoal powder and then mix it with the brush. And with Yupo, it doesn't matter if the paper gets wet uh, because it won't buckle. So you can take your brush that's covered in ink, uh, covered in charcoal and water and it sort of creates an ink-like uh, subject. And then you can make marks with the watery charcoal. Um, you can sort of mix more charcoal in with less water and you'll get darker marks and you can change the way that you are applying the marks with the brush um, to create different marks and you can get all these different types of textures. Super handy, very interesting way of applying charcoal. Now you to clean your brush when you've done this you want to allow your brush to dry out and then you want to like beat it against the surface and you'll dust all the charcoal out. And as mentioned before, you pose such a sturdy surface uh, that it doesn't matter how wet you can get it, you can just soak the paper and then wipe it away um, and continue using it once it's dry. So that's sort of one of the benefits of Yupo. So both acetone and fixative will have harmful vapors, which is why you need to use them in a well ventilated area with something like acetone. So the way that acetone is used, if you're going to use acetone, is that you'll be using it to create effects or texture. Now the way it works is acetone, as I mentioned before, has a super high alcoholic content. And when it hits the paper, it will separate the charcoal and then the acetone will evaporate very, very quickly and you'll be left with the separated charcoal on the paper. When using it on an absorbent surface, such as Bristol board or cartridge paper, it will, if you use too much, it will sink into the paper. It will start to deteriorate the paper and it can ruin your drawing. Now, fixative. We'll obviously be using this towards the end of the drawing in order to secure it to the paper. We're fixing it to the paper. It's essentially a liquidized glue that will set the charcoal to the paper. Now that's sort of an oversimplification, but that's the basis of how it works. With fixative, again, you've got to use it in a, in a ventilated area. It can be harmful. And if you've got respiratory issues, then use a mask. Um, there are instructions on how to use it um, on the can. So if you're unsure about anything, read the can. So towards the end of your drawing, you can start to use fixative to start securing things in place. When you're working with charcoal powder, you've got to be particular in the way that you apply it. Obviously, when you spray fixative, it's a pressurized can and the gas is forcing it out at quite high speed. If you are too close or at too much of an angle, you will just blow the charcoal powder away from your drawing. So you've got to be very, very careful with your first application of fixative. 
Now, I sort of recommend, it's difficult to show, but I sort of will recommend um, a spraying it sideways so it comes out and then flicking it, it down towards the end where you're no longer spraying just aerosol out. Um, it will take some getting used to, but essentially what you want to do is the vapor and the mist that comes out, you want to spray and then sort of flick down um, and it will lay it down onto the surface. Once you've done this a few times, the surface will start to become more secure and then you can just spray it as normal from about 30 centimeters away, small layers and just work around the drawing, letting it dry and then doing it again. Now, again, very important, you don't want to over spray fixative. A, you'll put too much into the air. It will have an effect on your lungs. It can make you feel a bit lightheaded, but also too much fixative will make your drawing too damp. And especially when you're working with these very, very fine textures and very, very sort of fine mark makings from brush marks or whatever it might be, the, the dampness of the fixative will cause your marks to lose their edge and sort of blend into one. So you've got to be very, very careful with fixative, very, very careful with how you apply it. That being said, if you can learn how to spray fixative properly and learn how to use it in tandem with your UPO paper, you can secure your drawings quite well to the, the UPO paper. Now, obviously, uh, I'm not going to take sandpaper to this, but I wouldn't do that to any other type of drawing because ultimately all drawings are fragile to a point. It's just that some drawings and some paintings are more fragile than others. Learning how to secure the drawings down is obviously an incredibly important part of the drawing. Uh, I've ruined, over the last month, I've ruined a lot of drawings when it's come to this fixing process. Uh, but once they are fixed, they seem to be quite secure. They've, I've put them all in cellophane bags off, and once they're in the bags, they're in boxes, they're being rubbed up against each other and there seems to be no major issues. I have also shipped one of these drawings out to someone and it survived. It went from England to France and there were no issues with it being damaged in transport. So they definitely seem to be uh, quite secure once secured properly. Right, so that's a quick look at all the materials that I use for charcoal drawings. And over the next four weeks, I've got more videos about charcoal, uh, talking about different ideas and different types of mark making. Uh, after that, I'm gonna be moving on to a different project, uh, still filming, still YouTubing, still trying to create this different kind of content of documenting the process, but with different materials and different types of exploration. And I hope you find it helpful. I'm just gonna sort of see what sticks, see what's helpful. Um, see what I like doing and how I like to document it all. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, if there's anything you want to see, anything you want to know, just let me know and I'll get back to you in comments. Um, and if there's loads of questions, I'll just make like a Q&A video. Um, but I hope you find it helpful and I'll see you in the coming weeks with the more charcoal videos. So peace.